If you are watching this video, it means that you are ready to start your final draft of your survival guide. I'm going to walk you through this. Listen very closely because it will affect your grade. There's some easy, easy ways to learn to earn points in here. And this is a huge opportunity to boost your GPA because it is our end of unit project. So make sure that you first take your piece of paper and fold it in half as if you're making a birthday card. Look at me in the corner right now of your screen as I do this. Go ahead and fold it in half like a birthday card. This part on the very front is going to be your title page. Make sure you have a clear, crisp fold and then unpause the video. Awesome. So your title page, it is going to be this part on the very front. There are three ways you can earn points. One is your name on it. That is such a simple way to earn points. Two, is it creative? Does it hook your reader to the topic? So remember, just like my example, I'll take you back to it in a second. This is the creative version of my wanna survive in the Canadian wilderness. Here are some do's and don'ts. And again, my name is on it by Miss Salidas. So go ahead, use some markers, have some fun. Make sure that you don't take too long on this. Here is your challenge. Make sure your name is on it. It's creative and hooks your reader to the topic and it's very neat. Don't spend too much time on this. Look at the clock right now. Make sure you have it done in three, or you can do four or five minutes, then unpause the video. Awesome, welcome back. So if you are watching this right now, you should have finished your whole title page. Now that you've done all three of these things, put a little check mark or an X in each box to show that you have done it. Is your name on it? Is it creative? Does it hook your reader? Make sure you leave these two boxes blank for me. Next, the do's page. Flip to the inside. Everything to the left, again, look at me in the corner. Everything to the left is gonna be do's. Here's what you have to do. Are there at least two do's? So take those two things from your graphic organizer that you made the other day and make sure that you use them here. Make sure that you take the two do's from this chart. You already have the evidence and you've decided what text feature you are going to use. So make sure as you move on to your do's, oops, sorry, one second. There must be two on that page. Does each have evidence in quotation marks? Does all evidence include the page number? And is there a text feature for each? You can either draw a graph on there or a picture or something. You will have to handwrite it though because it's your own. When you're done with your dues page, take about, it's okay if you take about 10, 15 minutes on this, do all those things, then unpause the video. Awesome, welcome back. So now to double check, go through, read each of these, and then mark that you've done it. There's two dues. Go ahead and back and say, is all of my evidence in quotation marks? Make an X if there is. Again, quotation marks means it must, uh, sorry guys, it must be inside these things, okay? Inside your evidence box. And then make sure that there is also a text feature for each. If there is, then awesome. And then now you are going to do the don'ts page. So that is gonna be the next side and the inside of your pamphlet. There must be at least two don'ts, evidence in quotation marks. It must have the page number where you got the evidence and a text feature for each. Again, sorry if you're struggling with this, but here's a reminder of what my dues page looked like. It's not very good, to be honest. Um, I'm not crazy about how big I wrote. It's kind of messy. And the pictures was just a little example, but make sure that it kind of follows this guideline. See how there's evidence in quotation marks with the page number. Go ahead and do your own. Awesome, so if you are unpaused, now you have done your title page, your dues page, and your don'ts. This is the, gonna be the toughest part. Use all that you've learned about writing. This should be on the back. Look at me in the corner of your screen. It is right here on the back, flip to the back. You are going to address the reader by writing at the top, dear traveler, and then putting a comma. So go ahead, just do that part right now, actually, right? Dear traveler, and then put a check mark when you're done. It should sort of look like this at the top, dear traveler, and then a comma. Put a check mark next to this when you're done. Now, as you continue to write your letter, remember, sign your name at the bottom, just like how I signed my name at the bottom here. You won't get to that yet though. You'll sign your name at the bottom. You will write at least two paragraphs, of course, indented. Make sure you properly use capital letters and punctuation. Did your letter include at least two two specific last pieces of advice. So don't just say, have fun, Brian, good luck. 
say something like, remember, make sure you bring that bug spray and don't lose hope. So really specific things that you have to explain. And then your handwriting needs to be perfectly neat. So go ahead, write that letter to the traveler that's going to read this. And remember, this is the last thing that they're going to read before they head into the Canadian wilderness. So make sure that you prepare them with advice and you're really, really encouraging and make them feel motivated and positive. Unpause when you're done. Awesome. So right now, if you feel comfortable reading it on your own, go ahead and make X's in each of the boxes and then you're all set. If not, I'm just going to read out loud right now if you want. Did you sign your name at the bottom? So make sure that the bottom looks, you can say best, you can say something else too. It can be sincerely or love always or good luck. I put best wishes. Did you write at least two paragraphs? And of course, you know to indent them. That's something that was wrong with mine. It wasn't two paragraphs. Did you properly use capital letters and punctuation? Did your letter include at least two? two specific last pieces of advice, I will go ahead through your letter and try and label you and maybe annotate one and two to see that you have two in there. And is your handwriting perfectly neat? So make sure you put X's in all these boxes if you did it and leave the teacher use and the points earned for me. And then when I collect this, I'm going to put a number right there. If you think that you are done, I would recommend going through proofreading, making it even stronger. But if you are, then take out your independent reading book.